So there was an incident when the, when the leopard was, uh, was under a chair and uh, one of our ministers, Michael Silver, the Minister of Labour, who was MPO, I'm going to go sit around the chair, I didn't realise the leopard was underneath. And when the, the third lick on the foot he stared down and found this growling leopard, he raised his son and charged into the main house. The mother was coming down, the rest of the cabinet for the cabinet meeting. She was absolutely living with this. Kotiye, Kotiye, kind of screaming at the top of his voice. Not the kind of Kotiye as you find now, but this is a genuine one. Then uh, she ran me and said, do you realize that we have lost every single by-election we had up to date? And if this man dies, we are going to lose Minuangode as well. <laughs> <laughs> Typical politician. Immediately she saw the practical problem there. She was not the kind of person who ever forced any ideology on any one of us. If she did, I wouldn't have been in the event. She was not a person who said, don't do it. She leaves you, but don't do it. But they realized themselves later that the men were not suitable. And you can bring Suleta at this point. Well, she's a remarkable woman. She never suggested to either of the two girls that we should get married. Never brought any, produced any young men for us. But I must say, when we found our own, she did disapprove. But very mildly, I think, very mildly. She went along with it. And every time a marriage collapsed, she kind of grumbled a bit and took it in her stride. Both of them married against my wish. I didn't want to stop because it was useless time to stop it. They would have been unhappy, I would have been unhappy. So I let them have their own wish. Whatever we've done, any conventional mother would have screamed her head off about. But you know, she would sort of reason, she would have followed a policy of ignore it and it'll go away. I've never heard any arguments in the home. If my mother ever lost her temper and said something, which my mother, I've never really seen her losing her temper. I've never seen her stamping her feet or her hands on a table, even with us. She was such a placid person. But if she disagreed with my father very strongly on something and she went on and on about it, he would just make a joke of it. And the rare occasions where I've, I've never seen my father lose his temper with her, but he used to lose his temper very often with everybody else and scream at the top of his voice and then the whole thing disappeared in a few seconds and then at that those moments she w she would know to keep silent and and uh, just keep calm the, all the children are wise in different ways but i can't say which is which one is wiser they get angry if i say that <laughs> sunita is very efficient in her work, whatever she does. She is very organized and of course determined and uh, stubborn also. <laughs> Sunetra was, uh, was a great asset uh, to the office uh, because one thing she was absolutely low-key and uh, this was a great help uh, and she was able to in a very in a quiet fashion, sort out a lot of problems uh, without uh, upsetting anybody. Yes, the fact that we were in the public eye all our lives, more or less, but always in the public eye has been a terrible nuisance. There was a time when I wore mini skirt, when some photographer chased me all over the fort and took a photograph and put it in the front page of the newspapers. Everybody was horrified. I was expected to have long hair, I cut it short. So, you see, silly, they're so trivial. But these things become important when you're in public life in this part of the world. I hated it. I hated photographers. Whenever I saw a photographer, I would turn my back to such an extent. And all three of us were like that, to such an extent that there are very few photographs of us when we were young, you know, at, at various functions, official functions or anything. Uh, I hated the limelight. I liked the work. I happen to be a workaholic and I like to do work and I like to see results. Uh, but uh, the limelight, I didn't like it. Even now I find it a bit of a joke. From the day she came to school, she was wanting to get into politics. And they did get into politics. And they helped me in my elections in Atmangala, Bhut, Sandhika and Sunitra. They took one hand the election because I was busy running down of helping the party. And Sandhika, of course, took to politics as an active politics and she did well. You know, she, it was very credible for her to have been the first the provincial council chief minister. Then within a few months she became prime minister, within a few months she became president. All this with her own, her own efforts. Of course, she, uh, the fact that she was still a bloody bandana, her son also helped, no doubt. And she was a celebrity. 
So Chandika and Shaz, um, so I think we agree that she's done well. Well, this girl, this is what her father used to say when she was a little girl. You know, uh, in the morning when he comes down for breakfast, they used to come down before going to school to say cheerio to the father. And he used to put his arms around the two girls and say, this is my political daughter. You see, my father in the latter years of his life, I remember he used to tell people in his loud voice that I, he used to point me out in my hearing uh, and I think it wasn't an accident, he wanted me to get it into my head like I'm brainwashing my children away from politics. He used to point me out and say, this is my child who is going to follow in my footsteps. Must be the father's courage. Some say he's not like the father. Father was not like her. <laughs> Maybe the grandmother's, I think. So, 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 my, my father's mother was very determined woman, they say. Did he want to like her? He's got a father's large heart. Father was very large heart, so is this boy. And he's a good debater. I think today he's the best debater in the opposition. On our side, he was a very good debater. He was, oh, some number of years he was leader of opposition to the CLP. And he says, stood up to the UNP, it was two third majority or five six majority. Stood up to that very well. She was, he was as soon as he came out to into politics. I was against her, but he was insisting on taking into politics. He got somebody to propose his name at the, at the party meeting, to propose him as, as an organizer. So I had no alternative but to accept it. She came into active politics and he was very active. I mean, Andrew is also like the father, very good at retorting. Even in parliament, is like, like that, very good speaker is. And he talks very, very fast. He's, like his father, he thinks very fast. And he talks to when anybody says anything. And that amuses me. I'm very happy about it. Hmm. At, uh, almost at every meal, we talk politics with the children. And the children there. I think they were all interested in politics. Well, it's difficult to do both. Now, my sister Sunetra is not involved in politics, so it's, uh, we hardly talk politics, so it doesn't matter. But in, when the other two are heavily involved in politics, they have two conflicting views, it's always, uh, there's a combustion point, as we have witnessed so many times. With Anura, I had always a good relationship. Sunetra was very reserved and used to keep to herself, so she was not that close to Anura when we were young, but Anura and I were very close. Until recently again, politics uh, came in and spoiled the relationship. But uh, otherwise, we were very friendly and we used to have a good time together, a good laugh. We have a lot of uh, interests in common, cinema, reading. Uh, Anura is not very interested in music, but Sunetra and I music also, theatre. And uh, we all love reading and writing also. Well, I think the main legacy is what I call the family business. Politics, uh, though we never made a business of it in the sense that most other politicians do. Uh, this is a kind of business where we give everything we have and get nothing back from it. Uh, well, I suppose that is chasing us all around, the three children. And uh, well, if they had reject this bandana, maybe they have another bandana that would turn to some other party, so it doesn't matter very much. The family stays on. That, that's, that's not my design, that's purely my accident. It was a very powerful group, no? And the two children, three children could get together with me. We can be a very powerful group in this country. I don't know, we can never get another, another group like that. She certainly would like to see her grandchildren more, much more than she does. But I think security considerations. But when she does go to my sister's official residence for various meetings and so on, she sees the kids has a quick chat with them. So that way she gets a chance to relate to them. It all depends on what they are going to do. I don't know if they want to do politics. I think you might do politics. Sandhika is hoping she will want. <laughs> if you want to answer and I think one after the grandfather, great grandfather. Not the daughter. She's interested in being a doctor. Boy is very very knowledgeable, far too knowledgeable for his age. And he's very fond of horses like his grandfather and his great grandfather. Right, just riding. He's got a horse at Temple Trees where he rides there. He's got the qualities of his great grandfather, Sir Solomon, more than his grandfather. I must say they are very worried about the mother. 
but mother's security what are they my mother is very worried about that herself and so are my children uh, whenever they know i'm going to a public meeting they keep telling me please don't go all leaders in this country have got assassinated at public meetings by the ltt and all that um but then you know it is uh, it has gone beyond that point now the only thing that worries me i am not bothered about my own life because i am i believe very deeply in buddhist philosophy i believe in my religion and i believe in uh, if you have done good work no harm can come to you if you have done bad work no harm can come to you. it's quite obvious from the premadas that you do harm to people and if you don't uh, behave like human beings you have to suffer for it that be i this to you know if i can have my children and grandchildren all around me be i this to you this is why die i know that the possible Thank you.